Hello finance people, my name is Robert and I'm here to help you take control of your personal finance and create wealth as a European. And in this Digiro tutorial, I'll show you how to use the app as a beginner to research, purchase and sell assets on Digiro. And also look at a few important sections that you'll need on your investing journey. I'm going to use the mobile app for the desktop tutorial, click on this video right here, the card appears somewhere on the top. So once you've installed the Jiro app and gone through the sign up process with all the steps and so on, you land on this page. If you haven't signed up yet, go to this link or click on the first link in the description and sign up through there. You will also support this channel by doing that. So the first thing you probably want to do is deposit some money in the Jiro. Let me show you how to do that. So all you have to do is uh, tap on this hamburger menu on top left and then you have this button deposit or withdraw. If you click on deposit, you'll see that you're able to do either in my case with Ideal, which is a, a local payment method in Netherlands, or you can do it with the manual bank transfer to the Giro. Now, one thing to note is that you only can move money between the Giro and the account number that you put in while you signed up to this, uh, to this app. That's something to keep in mind. There's no way to do it with credit cards or anything like that. It's always through that bank app. If I want to deposit, I'll just click on, uh, in my case, I could do manual transfer and you see all the details you need to enter in your bank so that you can send money to the Giro. You can see, in my case, it would go to Germany. And uh, from here, I would just fill it in in my bank app and send the money that way. And same way it works with withdrawals. If we take a look, it's kind of similar. You just don't need to select anything because it already knows your bank account. So let's exit this now. Let's assume you already deposit some money. And I just want to show you here at the top, you can always see how's your account doing. So you see, I open it up from the top. There's a drop down and now I can see my balance. I can see uh, the available money that I have to, to be traded. And some of it is already tied in into stocks. So I have it in my portfolio. You see also the uh, daily uh, profit or loss. In my case, it's right now 20 euros in profit for today. And total uh, p &L is about 237 uh, euros. So once you start with uh, investing with this euro, this will be useful just to keep an eye how you're doing. So let me close that. So let's find a stock that we want to buy now. You actually have many ways to do that in the market. So in your dashboard, you immediately see you can search by name here at the top if I search here. But also if you would tap on the top right corner, there's this uh, search icon, it would open up the same window. And also if you tap on this blue plus sign, so <laughs> there's many ways to buy. They clearly want you to buy more stocks. So let's say I tap on the search icon at the uh, top. Now I can search for Tesla. And if I uh, tap on the done part, you can see that you have three uh, stock options for Tesla. Might be a bit confusing. Why is that? But if you look at uh, in more detail, you see that you have the te first Tesla, which is on NASDAQ and it's in US dollars. So if you purchase it, you will have to convert um, your euros or pounds to US dollars and then you can purchase it. Now, the Giro does it automatically, so you don't need to worry about it. Um, but that's something to keep in mind that there's uh, different exchanges here but also in different currencies and different volumes. So for example, we have the second and third Tesla. There's two German exchanges that also provide this stock. So one stock can be on multiple exchanges. One of these German exchanges might just have very uh, little volume. So they have a low volume. They don't trade this uh, stock as much as the other two. So maybe later on, it will be harder to uh, buy the, the same quantity or maybe when you're selling, it'll be harder uh, to sell it as well for a certain price because uh, exchanges differ slightly. In our case, because I'm working with euros, I would choose one of the euro accounts, but in terms of fees, definitely US dollars is the cheaper option, especially if you're buying a smaller, uh, smaller options. But for fees and stuff like that, check out the link in the description. I have a video where I explain all the fees for uh, the Giro specifically. Another thing you'll notice if you scroll down that there's even more options. You have here leverage products, but you also have trackers. So I wouldn't bother with these uh, when you're starting out. If you're a beginner, I would just stick to the stocks because some of these uh, assets are leveraged. So what is leverage? In summary, you're basically borrowing money to increase the potential return of an investment. For example, let's say you have $1,000 and you leverage by a factor of two, that means you have $2,000 to invest. So if the stock goes up by 10% and you close the trade, you will make $200 in profit. 
then you pay back the loan of $1,000 and you're left with $1,200. If you would not use leverage, you would have $1,100. This sounds all good and enticing, but there's a catch. If the same stock goes down by 10%, you end up losing $200 and basically you just your equi equity goes down to $800. So that's what you're left with on your account. Now, let's say I'm going to actually, in this case, tap on the third Tesla just because I like that exchange. You see you land on this like an asset page. So you have more details about uh, the stock on this exchange. You see the exchange name is in the just below the Tesla Inc. name, XCT. Um, that's the exchange name. Oh, yeah. Here at the top, you see the 15 and little uh, orange ball. So if you tap on that, that means that the stats you see here are with a 15 minute delay. So they're not real uh, like live data. So you, you might have to use another tool to look it up or you can also pay a small fee to get the live data if that's what you want. So here you can scroll through. You have overview of the company and the financial summary. Uh, you have stuff like how is it doing, some uh, analyst reviews and and how is it doing in the news? So what are people talking about? What are financial publications talking about this stock specifically? But you have a lot of things to explore here. You have more tabs here if you want to go through them. Really up to you if, if this is helpful to you. You probably already uh, researched this on Google anyway. So um, this is just a nice extra there. In overview, this is probably where you spend most of the time. You can check, for example, this graph. How, how's the stock been uh, this year or one year uh, since now? You see that at the highest it's been at 342 euros and um, at the lowest about 101. But once you're researched and once you're happy with the stock, you want to buy it, you just tap on the buy button here. It opens up this buy page, I guess. And this is where it gets a little bit more technical. When you're starting out, it, it's a bit overwhelming to work with this. But let's say we want to buy this stock. I have buy now selected. Then you have here on the right day order. If I tap, I can choose day order or GTC. The day order just means that this order will be executed today. So by the time the exchange closes in Germany, this will be executed. If it's not executed, then it's not going to work out. So basically, it just get deleted from your, uh, from your account. GTC means good to cancel or something like that, where if you choose that, it will be there until you cancel it. So, for example, we can now select GTC and limit. We have a, a few options how to execute this order. So we have limit, market, stop loss and stop limit. Limit is simple. Let's say if I choose it and right now the stock is 182 euros, I will say, OK, once the stock reaches 180 euros, then execute this um, this order. So then just buy the order. Until then, it'll just wait there. And since we put in that it doesn't uh, expire until we cancel this order, it will be just there until this happens. Now, market is the simplest way to buy. It basically just uh, looks what the market price is at that moment, and then it buys it. You just need to enter here the quantity. Let's say we want 10 uh, Tesla stocks, and now it will buy 10 Tesla stocks at the market price. And then you have the option for stop loss. Now, this is quite similar to limit, but in this case, what happens, you can set the stop price. So let's say we're going to say it's 160. So when the price hits 160 euros, then execute this as a market uh, order. So what happens is, let's say I put the 10 uh, quantity here. So as soon as it hits 160, it will just send a market order. But it doesn't mean you get it for 160. You could get it if it's dropping a lot, you could get it cheaper. But if it's just like a fluctuating, you might get it for more. Now, to uh, counter that, you could set the last option, which is stop limit. And this uh, gives you a bit more control what you're doing. So in stop limit, you can set again the stop price. This is when it will start, uh, when it executes a limit order. So let's say you say, okay, um, when it hits 160, I'm willing to pay at most 162. So that way you have a bit of room there to say, okay, as long as it doesn't go above that price, 162, I'm okay to buy it, even if it's not 160. Because when they execute these market, um, market orders, it does, you have no guarantee it goes for that price, right? It's, it's whatever price is at that moment. So in this case, you would also enter the quantity 
and now there you see that you would need uh, 1,620 euros to execute this. Now I could just place this, place order if I uh, click on it, and now uh, it just uh, repeats what you have here, it's like a summary, and then if you tap on confirm, this would go and now wait. Now if you confirm it, it will wait until uh, 160 is reached, and in this case, because I chose the GTC order, it's going to be there, I believe, at least 90 days. And you see that they also give you the Smith for the Giro fees, uh, 4 euros 90 cents. So if you execute this, and that's how much you're going to pay for it. Do you find this video helpful? Then give it a thumbs up so I know you like it. So in my case, I'm just going to cancel this because I'm not going to buy it uh, right now. But if I uh, tap on cancel, so once you're ready to sell your stock, you, you've seen it rise, it's uh, risen, whatever, 20% and you're happy with those returns, then you can tap on the sell and you do the same but the opposite way. So um, you could just execute as a market if you want it to, to be quick. You see that it already went uh, high enough, you execute as a market. And now if you see here at the bottom, I don't actually have any Tesla stock, so I probably can't do this. Um, but let me search for Microsoft. You see there's three options. I have the one in XCT. Let me choose that one. And now if I tap on the cell here at the bottom, you see that it actually shows how much current position is here at the bottom. You see I have five shares and it's about 1,206 euros. So now I could say, okay, if it goes, let's say limit order, and I'm going to put the limit to 242, and the quantity, the all five, I'm going to sell all five once it reaches the 242 in price and then it will execute that order. That's how you sell your stocks. Pretty simple, all in the same view, kind of. Oh yeah, I forgot uh, to mention before, but keep in mind that these exchanges have opening hours. So if you buy from US, you obviously can buy it uh, our morning, our European morning. The exchange in, in, in New York is still closed because it's early, early morning there. So keep in mind that there's different opening hours and it's not like buying a Bitcoin where there's no time limits. With these, you actually have opening hours and weekends, you can't actually trade stocks or uh, anything like that unless it's a special asset like that. I'm gonna go to the market tab here at the bottom. I tapped on the market and this is where you do your research. You have uh, all kinds of stocks here. You can search for stocks, but you also have news in general about finance and uh, what's happening in different parts of the world. And then you have obviously uh, here at the bottom, if you tap on favorites, you can add shares to your favorites. Well, I have a few, a few uh, ETFs here that I uh, wanna follow and might buy later but this is a, just a nice way to keep your wish list. And then you have obviously portfolio. Once you buy a few stocks or ETFs or any other assets, they start showing up here. And you see here, for example, Microsoft and what I can see from here, if I tap on it, it opens it up and there's more details and you see the PNL, so profit and loss for today and total PNL, which is uh, 92 euros right now. So th that means unrealized PNL in percentages about 8%. 8.8%. So I'm doing quite okay with this specific stock. Now let's go back. And the last uh, tab here at the bottom, you have messages. And this is basically, you get messages from the Giro. And uh, if, if there's anything interesting, you'll see it there here. But what I wanna also show you, you have your orders here. So if you uh, requested orders, for example, uh, outside the opening hours, they would show up here. Uh, and also you have the option to look at the history. So if I select, for example, from January, you'll see that there's some history there when I bought the Microsoft uh, and the S&P 500. But what's interesting, uh, this is quite basic, but if you tap on transactions, no, sorry, I mean uh, account statement. When you tap on that, this is where it gets a bit more interesting because you can see what kind of fees uh, the Jira applies. So for example, when I bought the five Microsoft uh, shares, I paid about five euros in the fees. But also you see here later, I got this, um, so it's in the Dutch here, but basically this is a fee for using the exchange. It's once a year, if you have any, uh, any asset in that exchange, they'll charge you this fee. So, and if you have assets in 10 different exchanges, that means you're going to see 10 different uh, uh, fees here for each exchange. Last but not least, if you open the hamburger menu, I wanted to mention that you also have here the settings. 
And here in settings, you can set things like product settings. And this is uh, interesting if you get into investing, you want to uh, invest more complex uh, assets, then here you'll be able to change your account type. Right now, mine is set to basic, but you could also see here you have informed and also uh, a bit more complex investment products here. You see uh, that you have options for that. So this is where you could request to, to change that. But you do need to uh, show that you know what you're doing, basically. Then let's go back. You also have things here like the currency handling. If you do a lot of trades in US or maybe in UK, and what this means is right now, when the auto FX is selected, that means that uh, the Jiro will automatically uh, ex change the money for you. So if you buy mm, something in US, in US dollars, it will uh, exchange your euros or pounds automatically to uh, dollars. They'll apply a certain fee to it and uh, then um, it just makes it super easy. If you plan to day trade or just use it often, then maybe manually will be more um, cost effective for you. So check it out, uh, check the fees and stuff like that. But this is where you can find it. And then the rest of the settings are kind of obvious. I don't want to uh, dive into them. I think once you start using this platform, you will learn more about it. Now that you know your way around the Jiro platform, how about buying a popular S&P 500 index fund? And because there's like a dozen options on the Jiro, I'll explain everything in more detail right here.